How's it going? I am here today with Kim Koko Iwamoto. She is a candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you for walking through with us Thank today. you, yeah. Axel. Thank you for having me. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, sure. What are your ties to Hawaii? What makes you want to get involved? Well, I was involved? born on um, Kauai and I was raised on Oahu. And um, I came back home to Hawaii to take care of my mom. She had a stroke and um, when I did, I took the bar here. Um, I became a public interest attorney and I was um, doing free legal clinics in homeless shelters and community centers across the state. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and then, I, um, and then I became a licensed therapeutic foster parent and two teenagers. Uh, many of them were previously homeless yeah. or incarcerated and just abandoned in, in the youth prison by their parents. Um, so yeah, I opened my home and my heart and eventually I became their advocate, you know, um, with their public education, which led me to run for the Board of Education in 2006. Mm -hmm. And um, with the help of my family and the community members, I was able to get elected and then re-elected in 2010. Yeah. On your website, I saw that you talk about experience, experiencing personal injustice. That's right. something that woke you to, to larger social injustice. Yes. Can you talk about that experience sure. and how that influenced your so politics? So growing up, my dream was to work in the fashion industry in New York City. Oh, right. So I taught myself how to sew when I was in elementary school. I learned how to, I, I learned how to pattern make. I was producing my own fashion shows. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated from high school, um, I, went, I applied to one college, and that was the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. And um, I got in. And so I was working, I graduated. I was working in the industry. It was my dream come true. Suddenly, my employer called me into her office. He said, you know, I got a call last night at home from our largest corporate client, and they said that they weren't comfortable working with you because you're trans. And it was devastating to me. I'm, I found myself out of a job. And it woke me up to this idea of the social injustice and the economic impact it had on me. You know, when you're not able to, um, when you're relying on your friends for food, and you know you're you're scared about not being able to pay for your you know your housing. Right. Um, and then I said, you know, I went to seek legal help at a community uh, clinic, um, law clinic, and I found out that the laws were written to protect employers so that they continue to treat workers like this. And I said, you know what, that's not right. It was, er it was in the early 90s and um, I made a decision to go to law school and learn the law so I can change the law. And so that's what I did when I returned back to Hawaii. Um, I worked with other community members and our allies and we did change all the civil rights laws regarding employment so that people can work with dignity um, in housing and public accommodations. And then eventually it came full circle because the governor um, at, at some point, Governor Abercrombie appointed me to the Civil Rights Commission. So I was a commissioner enforcing the laws that I helped to create. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so what would you say the three issues that are facing Hawaii are? If you three well, you know, issues. obviously if you look around, yeah. um, I think, you know, affordable housing and, you know, homelessness that's mm -hmm. so connected, those two issues, yeah. I would say they're really one. Um, you know, we need to look at all, look at all the, uh, you know, various pressures on our environment, whether it's corporations uh, trying to hog the water, um, or you know, co corporations spraying pesticides and not wanting to disclose what they're spraying on our families. Um, also, education. My God, our legislature has been derelict in its duty to adequately fund public education in Hawaii. You know, we used to have preschool. Um, in Hawaii and um, one of my opponents gutted preschools um, out of our public education system and then um, um, and we also could do much better around college and graduate school I do see an, a way for our economy to um, to bear offering students free free, edu um, free education for graduates all the way through graduate school because when you think about it um, when you pay um, your student debt back. Most of that, after you graduate and you're paying your student debt, most of that money is interest. Right. And it's leaving our economy. Mm -hmm. But imagine if that money, if you weren't paying that money, all that student loans back, mm -hmm. and you were kind of, you know, spending it down within your own community, yeah. at your local stores, um, in your local, you know, your local community, and through the GET, 
that money is going to to um, sustain the local economy and it trickles and cycles through so basically that's an opportunity that we're losing when we ship all the money away to financial institutions right yes so i saw earlier you had a pin that said one job should be enough yes and i know that you've been endorsed by unite here local five that's right what are your thoughts on uh, improving the quality of life uh, lowering the cost of living for working families and younger people. Right, well the first thing is, like, you know, I, when I was on the Board of Education, I asked the superintendent, mm. I said, are, do we have any state workers who are working full-time jobs in our schools who are, whose own kids are eligible for free and reduced lunch from the federal government? Mm. And she said, of course. I mean, how shameful is that, that our own state is perpetuating poverty on state workers and their families? Mm. Like we need to change that that completely, and take responsibility to pay people a livable wage. Right. Um, so yes, one job should be enough. And right now, the minimum wage of ten dollars and ten cents. Um, somebody would have to work two full-time jobs just to be considered very low income by the federal government. Right. So even though you know many of the legislators are patting themselves on the back for getting ten dollars and ten cents. That is like, we're halfway there. It's just um, the cost of living, um, all of those issues are very, very, very um, expensive. So, yeah, is this? Well, all right. Yeah. Oh, this we is We are it. here, we're at the oh, bad entry, wow. yes. That was so quick. <laughs> So Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Of course, and don't forget to vote. August 11th uh, primary and November 6th general yeah. election. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha.